Yo, what's up, dudes? How you doing? I haven't been up in a little bit. Last week was school vacation, so it was a little tricky. All I had time for was to upload a video from four years ago. <laughs> but a little bit more time this week, so I'm trying to get a video up. And uh, one thing that's sort of been on my mind lately is uh, I had watched uh, Tone King's uh, video uh, about a week ago, about uh, maybe a longer, a couple of weeks ago, about um, uh, brands that have gone under, like Crank and... You know, he, they, they had uh, talked all about, you know, different brands that had sort of come and gone. And a few people mentioned in the comments uh, a couple of music stores that had gone. And I was talking about, about it to a buddy of mine recently. And, you know, there was this area in Boston, right by Berkeley, that started out with one music store, which was really E. Wurlitzer on Newbury Street. And that's where I bought a guitar almost exactly like this one, brand new, back in uh, 81. I guess it was October and November of 81. And um, and then uh, uh, Daddy's Junkie Music moved in. They were a regional chain, a few of you might be uh, familiar with. And LaSalle Music came in, and they were sort of a regional. I wouldn't say a chain. I don't think they had more than like three, maybe four stores uh, at their peak. I forget now. But uh, they I know they had a big store in Connecticut and maybe two stores in Connecticut. And then they came up here uh, to Boston, and they opened up, like, literally right around the corner from Berkeley. In fact, you had to walk by. Berkeley has two buildings. They have three now, but at the time they had two buildings, an older building on Boylston Street and then a newer one on the corner of uh, Boylston and Mass Ave, um, the Performance Center. And um, uh, they, uh, you had to walk by LaSalle Music to get between the two. So, you know, good foot traffic, you know, good location to be. And they were killing it on price. So LaSalle Music, gone. EU Wurlitzer, which had been around from 1890, gone in 1999, bankrupt over. Um, Daddy's Chunky Music, they were the one that sort of outlasted them all, much to everyone's surprise, and boom, gone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were talking about it at the um, uh, NAM show about how, the, you know, retail, retail's hurting. You know, re retail is... Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not the the markup that it was back then. And, uh, you know, price constraints and price pressure from uh, internet sales. Right? Back then it was sort of catalog sales. And, you, like, you know, you couldn't sell a fender through a catalog. You had to walk in. It was very much like uh, going to a car dealership. You know, there was regions. And, you know, we were a fender dealer. And we had, you know, uh, our location wrapped up. And then uh, daddies came in, and we didn't know what, what was going to happen. It's like, well, are they going to be a fan? You know, how can they come, like, right up the street from us and still be a fender deal? And it's like, well, you know, they, they have more stores. <laughs> That's simple. So, you know, there wasn't a lot of loyalty, I would say, for manufacturers. Uh, they, they pretty much, uh, you know, went with the, the store selling bass, which is a business decision that is pretty sound. But, uh, you know, it... it it really, I think, hurt a lot of the smaller uh, stores. And, uh, you know, most of the smaller stores had lessons. But then I noticed that when the Guitar Center, because you get foot traffic, uh, the Guitar Center down in Braintree that opened up a couple of years ago, um, they have Guitar Center Studios in there, again, to generate the foot traffic. Um, uh, you know, Guitar Center gets a lot of uh, flack, and usually it's just because the the people who work there, you know, um, you know, they get uh, crap for, you know, not being whatever, into whatever you are into or don't have the knowledge you expect them to have or whatever. But, you know, they're a, they're a large retail chain. And you, you know, you're sort of going to get there. Uh, they, they, that, that It is what it is. Uh, and most people do their uh, their reviews through the internet. They go to forums and they go to websites that have a lot of reviews and they go to YouTube uh, and they check out. They, you know, I know I do. So uh, that's sort of supplanted going to the local music store and picking the guy's brain. 
uh, you know, about, about this or about that, because, you know, quite frankly, they're just there to sell your product. You're not really getting an unbiased review. You'd be better off to talk to someone who owns it than someone who's selling it, you know, buyers rather than sellers. So I love Guitar Center Used. I bought this from Guitar Center Used for very much below what they retail for. And I think that's because when you go to sell a guitar at a music store, uh, you know, they're not there to give you top dollar. They're there to make money from you. And Guitar Center has a policy of not marking up used guitars very much um, because they want the stock to rotate. Uh, somebody was telling me at the NAMM show that the markup on their stuff is like 10%, maybe 15%, and that's it. Uh, that, you know, even if they, you know, they buy a top of the line, a guitar that would sell for five or $600 and they pay a hundred dollars for it, they put it up for like $150, you know, they, 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 they put it, they, they, they mark it up very little, you know, if they get it for very little and, uh, that's really worked out for them because it keeps the stock rotating. And I've seen some insane deals on uh, their site that if I just had the cash at the time, I'd probably own a dozen more guitars. Uh, they had an RG, a beautiful 87 RG 550. Um, gorgeous guitar, uh, 199 Of course, it, it showed up. I was like checking it. I had checked it earlier in the morning. I checked it later on that day, and it showed up. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome to called him right up he's like dude that sold seconds after we posted it and i a buddy of mine my buddy bobby says i almost think that there's dealers that go on there and constantly troll that site because they can get guitars very inexpensively so i really do love their used uh guitar uh that kramer i paid three and a quarter for that that's a guitar that on uh, uh you know ebay they want uh, 9.99 and up i mean they they just ask for ridiculous uh, money on on ebay everybody on mo well not everybody but 99 percent of the people on ebay they just they ask way too much money for those guitars and uh, and they sit on there. You see them sit on the, I, I see the same guitars on there for months and months and months where Guitar Center, their stock rotates a lot. And um, it, you know, a lot of times it's here today, gone later that hour. And, uh, uh, you know, it, that's why when I talk about buying stuff, you got to jump on it. You really do because it will go fast if the price is right. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't really go to Guitar Center for advice. Uh, I go there to get the cheapest price, and um, and it, you know, and it it it's been working out. Um, some things you just can't get there, and when you want uh, a, like something high end, uh, then you have to go to a you know a, a local store because the the high end people don't want to deal. They don't want the price pressure uh, that. The, uh, a big box does. In fact, they're having a fire sale on PRS right now. Apparently, PRS and Guitar Center had a falling out, just like Mazer and them had a falling out, and they were just blowing stuff out. They're like, "Yeah, here's your here's your map, <laughs> your minimum advertised price," and they would just cut it by like 30 40 percent. So they have you know guitars on uh, there right now, uh, PRS high end guitars that you know list for seven thousand, and they're asking you know three thousand. So, I mean, you're literally getting like 50% off, um, which is uh, pretty good for a high-end guitar. Uh, most high-end guitars try to sell for a very close, uh, if not exactly at minimum advertised price. So, um, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where it, w one of the basic fundamental assumptions of uh supply and demand is perfect in perfect information but you never have that right it used to be that you would go to a place and you think you're getting a good deal and then maybe a year later you find that someone else had it for cheaper you know or if someone else had it for more and you actually did get a good deal but you don't know at the time you just you know you're just working off uh, and so people would put ads in the paper but then the the manufacturers would say you can't advertise our price and it's a call for price right you they don't even, they won't allow them to put the price in because they don't want price wars going on and again that's information and so where you find it is with the internet is that the unachievable standard of perfect information you get closer and closer so uh, for local high end boutique I'd say Matt's Music is you know one of the better stores around it's a gorgeous uh, store. And uh, it really does cater to a, um, 
you know, to a client who, who really, you know, they don't buy a lot of instruments, but when they do, they want a really high end, uh, guitar. Um, and, uh, you know, you can get, uh, Sir and, uh, Jackson USA and, um, a whole bunch of other, you know, sort of high-end brands there. And for amps, you know, they've got, you know, Bogner and uh, uh, Mesa and, um, you know, uh, uh, EVH. And, you know, it, it's all fairly high-end stuff. Ugh, this one brand he just got in, I, I can't think of it right now. Of course, he has Fuchs and, you know, a few of those other, you know, boutique brands. Jeez, um, I can't think of the brand, but, uh, you know, they're... they're I'll dig through my footage. I, I went there and, and did a little video, but uh, unfortunately, when I interviewed him, the audio um, didn't come out that great, and I'm having all kinds of trouble getting that straightened out, but hey, that's for another time. But I'd love to hear you, what you uh, say down in the comments about, um, you know, what you're using for, a, you know, for a, a guitar uh, store or a music store these days. Uh, I love guitar center used. I have them shipped to my local store. I go there. I check it out. Uh, I have to pay for it up front. I have to pay for shipping. I have to pay for everything right up front, no matter where it is in the U.S. That's how I did it with this guitar. That's how I did it with the Kramer. And you just have it shipped to your local store. You go out there. You unbox it with the employee. You take a look. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it. And all you have to do is get your receipt stamped and walked out the door. Or, you know what? This isn't what I thought it was. I don't like it. I'm going to get a refund right now. Bring it right up and return the guitar. And uh, a couple of times they've returned my shipping. And I think one time they didn't. And I didn't make a stink about it because um, I think it was like 10 bucks shipping. You know, a lot of times their shipping's like $20, $21. Um, and, but they've refunded it where the guitar wasn't as it was described so um you know they'd say it's in great condition or they give it three or four stars and it shows up and i'm like the pickups don't work like what's this and they're like oh maybe he didn't test it you know or something like that and you just get a refund yeah that's fine so um what i i tend not to do is think it's some giant conspiracy to rob me of money you know it's like it's probably more to do with laziness than than anything so uh yeah, it's just the way it goes and the great thing about it is that unlike eBay, you know, uh, where I get it and I open it up and it's like it's not correct and you have to open a ticket and talk about sending it back and trying to work something out. And I had one really good eBay uh, score. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I tend to stay away because I don't want to deal with the hassle of having to, you know, uh, return the instrument um or you know all that goes with it I, I like to buy from guitar center use and they have really good prices they really do put price pressure on people that come in to sell stuff and um that really just works out for me because i i you know i get this stuff for you know what i would say uh relatively low end on the on the on the price continuum from you know uh, awesome deal to not so great deal um I think they're closer to awesome deal, especially like that Kramer. That was really good. that uh, Kramer Farrington uh, acoustic. You know, you never see one. If that was on uh, eBay, someone would want like two thousand dollars for it. They would call it, you know, vintage. You know, they I, I paid two ninety nine. You know, again under my three hundred dollar price point. So uh, I like them for used stuff. Uh, I just really think this was under a grand. You know, this one up on uh, eBay right now with the uh, the older one without the gold tuners without the the gold uh switch and uh you know the guy wants like 13.99 it's like a 400 dollars over it's like a 40 percent markup over what i paid for this so uh you know you know it, we, it's real easy it, it, you know they're like the justin bieber right of the of the music industry they're just so easy to kick <laughs> down the road and say uh you know uh, it, 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 they're the butt of countless jokes, but I don't know. I, I've had really good luck with their use section, and um, uh, you won't hear me say a you know a bad thing about it because I've just done so well with them. Um, you know, for strings, I tend to go to Musician's Friend. Uh, I think they have some of the best prices, and I buy in bulk. I buy in like ten packs, uh, so I'll buy like two ten packs of uh, Diodario 10s or a couple of 10-packs of Diodario 9s or one 10-pack of each. Uh, so I make sure I have enough uh, strings. In fact, I'm getting down. I think I'm down to like two or three sets left. The time to order another 10-pack. And picks. I'll buy picks by the uh, half a gross. 
you know, because you save a lot more money than walking in and you know, you're getting a pick for 50 cents, a single pick for 50 cents. I can buy a, a whole bag of picks for about 20 bucks. So, um, you know, it, it just makes more sense to buy in bulk on, on things like that. Especially picks, they wear out so quickly and same with strings. But I'd love to know what you're using for a, for a guitar store, music store, you know, um, because uh, there's so few now. You know, we had a whole bunch. And, you know, my boss talked about this back in the 80s. Well, he lamented what he called the blockbusterization of America. And he said, you know, all these little mom and pop video stores are all getting serious pressure uh, from Blockbuster. Uh, they have the titles and they have, you know, they it's all this, you know, the competitive pressure. And, uh, and to some degree, he was right, right? There's all this condensation where you have many small players and now you have very few big players. Mars Music, Meteoric Rise, Meteoric Fall. <laughs> that guy had no idea what he was getting. Didn't, didn't that guy like win the lottery or something, right? And blew all his fortune or he, he hit the stock lottery or something. He, he came into a boatload of money somehow and uh, basically turned it into... Um, uh, a losing music store because you know it was high end and there just wasn't enough uh, margin, uh, very very tight margins. So uh, you know that's my thoughts about the state of music stores right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And until next time, rock on. <laughs>